I've been waiting all week, man. Waiting for the weekend. Trying to get close to this cute one that don't hold a free game. Drink a change in the kitchen, uh. Have my own bottle for the sip and, uh. Slump on the couch. Apple's now changing the equation and opens up the Pro to a wider range of creators and professionals with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, starting at $2,000. This is the notebook that Mac-minded creative professionals have been waiting for. With a much more powerful Apple chip, the M1 Pro and M1 Max, an extensive selection of ports, and revolutionary screen technology. If you're a student and you've been looking for a laptop that's portable enough to take between classes and powerful enough to handle your power-hungry applications, Are we good? then I this video is I was for you. Hit it once, I ain't caught back. So she hit my line on some disrespect. I kind of felt bad, but I snapped back. I don't take that. My pride too intact. We don't cuff hoes. We don't love dogs. Many of us have been asking for a MacBook Pro redesign for years, and with the MacBook Pro 14-inch, we finally get it. This is the biggest overhaul the lineup has had in years. And it feels like Apple is once again passionate and excited about the MacBook Pro. And that excitement is infectious. The most noticeable design change is that 14 inch screen size. That's almost a one inch increase compared to the MacBook Pro 13 inch. This extra screen real estate is well used, offering you a much larger area to work on than the 13 inch model without increasing the overall size of the laptop too much. If the 16 inch MacBook Pro felt too big and the 13 inch was too small for you, then the 14 inch could be the perfect compromise. The resolution has been upped from 2560 by 1600 on the 13 inch to, to 3024 by 1964, which boosts the pixel density from 227 pixels per inch to 254 PPI. Not only is this larger, but it's very sharp. The bezels around the screen have also been slimmed down. The thick bezels of previous MacBooks were one of my biggest concerns. They honestly made the laptop look a little bit outdated. So the thinner bezels on the 14 inch MacBook Pro are extremely welcome. Not only does it make the laptop look more modern and let your full attention fall on that gorgeous screen, but it means that Apple has managed to fit in a larger screen without making the actual body of the MacBook Pro any larger. The slim down bezels do come at a cost though, as Apple has introduced one of its most controversial design decisions in recent memory, a notch that surrounds the webcam. It's certainly noticeable as a notch extends down into the menu bar that runs along the top of the screen. However, macOS Monterey is designed to deal with it. The menu bar of apps adapt to the screen on either side of the notch. The mouse cursor, meanwhile, moves beneath the notch. This allows the application to then take up even more screen space below it, resulting in more desktop real estate for working. When you open up the 14-inch MacBook Pro, another major redesign reveals itself. There's no longer a touch bar that runs along the top of the keyboard. To be honest with you, the touch bar proved to be unpopular among some. In fact, I'd go to say most users who found it pretty gimmicky. And third-party apps, in my opinion, didn't really use it to its full potential. With the new MacBook Pros, the touch bar is gone, replaced by a return of physical keys. There's still a Touch ID button for logging in using just your fingerprint, and that continues to work pretty well. The other major design change is when it comes to ports. With the MacBook Pro 14 inch, you have three Thunderbolt 4 ports, one HDMI port, an SDXC card slot, and MagSafe 3 port. We all appreciate that Apple took a step back and decided to bring back some ports that should have been there in the first place. The 14 inch MacBook Pro is small enough to go around with you on a day to day. Although it doesn't feel as weightless as a 2.8 pound MacBook Air, it is still pretty lightweight and won't be a hassle to carry around classes considering its size and weight, which is around 3.5 pounds. The MacBook Pro is also very good while using it on the lap. It does not heat up to extreme temperatures and remains cool during most tasks. Whether you're in the library typing a research paper or you're in your bedroom editing a project that you've been procrastinating on, the MacBook Pro fans rarely ever kick in. While the new design of the MacBook Pro 14 inch is one of the most exciting things about this product, the tweaks Apple made to the hardware beneath the chassis are even more exciting. But before we get into that, I want to thank CleanMyMac for sponsoring this video. 
This is one of the first applications I download on any new Mac computer. This app basically keeps your Mac from viruses, adware, and spyware. It does this by cleaning up unnecessary junk files like outdated caches, broken downloads, logs, and useless localizations. The smart scan tool can scan your computer for unnecessary data that you didn't need, which can honestly save you a ton of space throughout the school year. Now, if your laptop is slowing down, the speed and maintenance feature can identify and quit applications that are slowing down your computer and improve your drive speeds. This is just a handful of features Clean My Mac has to maintain your Mac. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video. Link will be down in the description. Now let's get back to this performance. The M1 Pro and M1 Max are both available in the MacBook Pro 14 inch and offer performance that far exceed the M1. Now regardless of what processor you choose, both the M1 Pro and M1 Max are big leaps over the existing M1 chip. And the M1 chip was not one to sleep on to begin with. The M1 Pro has a dual chip architecture that supports up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory with a bandwidth of 200 gigabits per second, which is almost three times the bandwidth of the M1. The CPU has eight high performance cores and two high efficiency cores, and the M1 Pro will switch between these two to optimize performance on whatever tasks you're running. For graphics, the M1 Pro comes with a 16 core GPU with 2048 execution units and a performance of 5.2 teraflops, which Apple promises is two times faster graphic performance compared to the M1. The version I have here is a base model M1 Pro, which has eight cores in total. This is gonna be the best options for any students or creative professionals who are looking to just pick up a great reliable laptop that could perform well given any task. For storage, Apple now uses SSDs and the entry level model is equipped with 512 gigs of storage and you can configure your storage up to eight terabytes, but of course that is gonna cost a lot more. For content creation and creative work, these are the most powerful laptops I've ever tested. The basic M1 family chip design is easy enough to understand, even though it's a new kind of chip architecture compared to the x86, since the fundamental parts are all the same. Apple has made three kinds of processor cores, efficiency, performance, and GPU, and all the M1 chips are different combinations of the exact same cores with unified memory between them. Final Cut Pro runs really smooth and allows for extremely fast editing with no hassle even at higher resolutions. Most of my projects were shot in 4K and exported in H.264. This entire video and the past few videos on the channel were edited on Final Cut on this machine with better quality settings turned on and I rarely experienced a frame drop scrubbing through the timeline. The only time I did honestly was when I had other power hungry applications running in the background and even that was barely noticeable. Exporting times are ridiculous. I managed to export most of my videos in just under five minutes. Another thing that will add to the overall productivity experience is ProMotion, which is Apple's technology that enables refresh rates up to 120 hertz. Scrolling through web pages and documents just felt silky smooth. I definitely noticed that my eyes were less fatigued thanks to the speedy refresh rate. I'm happy to see this becoming more and more common in laptops. ProMotion is also intelligent enough to lower the refresh rate when it makes sense which goes a long way towards saving battery life. If you're a college student and consider that this is a hefty premium to pay for a better screen and webcam and more ports, it might be like buying a sport car for just driving it around the city streets. Bring in all day, everyday webcam video meetings, you might be able to make it a good case. All that aside, the M1 MacBook Air is still my recommendation for mainstream users. However, if you are a creative and you're a student or just some form of professional, this is the perfect laptop for you. Consider the hefty price as a long-term investment. When Apple launched a MacBook Pro 13-inch M1, it had the longest battery life ever on a MacBook, and the test confirmed that. So when Apple revealed that the 14-inch could beat the 13-inch by a whopping seven hours, I couldn't wait to try it myself. Apple claims that the MacBook Pro 14-inch can hit up to 17 hours when playing full-screen videos and 11 hours of wireless web browsing. This jump in battery life is fantastic, especially when you consider how much more powerful the laptop is. Apple has obviously worked hard to improve the efficiency of its M1 Pro and M1 Max. It means this is a powerful portable workstation that can last you a full workday. And if you're not a power hungry user, this can easily last you multiple days of use.
Apple seems to finally have come back to reality in terms of design. Well, apart from the notch. Adding some useful ports and ditching the touch bar are just smart, practical choices and honestly, worth the upgrade for many people. What are the drawbacks though? The biggest one is the machines are expensive. If you're an actual pro, the prices are perhaps easy to justify for the performance. But if you're just doing everyday productivity work, there's many other options for under $2,000. With all that said, the new MacBook Pros are excellent and I'm honestly here for it. My name is Victor Kamanga. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see other student related videos, check out my playlist by clicking here. But other than that, looking forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Bye.